I'm Jeff. I'm a dev here. I I know most of you guys. Um, I wanted to talk about the CRM REST Builder. This is a tool that was um, built for interacting with the CRM Web API. So CRM has a Web API that you can make calls to. You can do creates, updates, retrieves, deletes, that kind of stuff. Um, a lot of us, if you worked with CRM before, it was all like you know, C-sharp SDK type of stuff. Now they have a web API, but it was hard for me to understand what and how to do it. So I mostly use this tool when I'm trying to do some JavaScript or TypeScript or some kind of web interaction with CRM that I need to get records or create records and I need to build like a more complicated query or, and I just don't know how to do it right off the top of my head because maybe I don't know like the field names or the entity names or the relationship names. Um, it used to be a tool that you would, a solution that you would put in your environment, right? It, it was, uh, you, you'd import it into environment, it was a REST builder solution, and then it'd give you this button right here that would launch this web resource. And this is where you would, would you know, choose and what you're doing. Now, they have it in the XRM toolbox. They called it Dataverse REST builder here. So I'm going to go ahead and open this, and I'm connected to an environment. And so it's it's kind of similar, but now it's you don't have to install a solution anymore. Um, I wanted to demo this to everyone just to kind of show, hey, this is another tool. If you're trying to do JavaScript work or build some request and you're struggling, you can use this tool to do that. So let's say I wanted to update a phone call record in the system. So I'm not going to be on the phone call form itself. I'm going to be somewhere else. But when this action happens or it gets triggered, I need to go update a phone call in the system. You can choose what your request type is here. Um, so I, sorry, I did a file new, a new collection. So I'm creating a new request. And then you can save these. So you can open them again later. I'm going to choose update. Um, here you have some options like, hey, what version are you on? Because we're in the cloud, we're usually the, the latest. Do you want async or synchronous? Um, do you need a token header? Are you impersonating? Um, formatting values, returning records, yes or no? Do you need to detect duplicates? So there's kind of just some options around it. You select the table you want. So I'm going to choose phone call here. You can see it has a list of all the tables here. So maybe you're like, oh, I need to work with the financial product. Cool. It, it can get you to that table as well. Um, so if you choose that table, it's grabbing some metadata around it so that you have like the fields and uh, what they are. Sorry, this is a long running operation. It, didn't, it doesn't take that long. At least I didn't think it took that long. We got a question from Mr. Boahi. Yeah, go ahead, Josh. Yeah, Jeff, I've never used a process synchronous with the web API. What's the difference? I don't know. Anyone know? Like I've never done it, but has anyone done OData synchronous web API? It's probably call? just with the XML HTTP request where it can technically be synchronous, but that's not supposed to use that anymore. Yeah, I was going to say, I don't think you need to do synchronous ever. OK, cool. Good to know. Because yeah. I, I don't I'd think, always it's, recommend it, I think it's pointless. Yeah. Um, so here, if if your table has an alternate key, you can say, hey, I want to use the alt key instead. Most of the time, you just need the GUID of the phone call, you know, the record that you're going to update. Um, and then you can choose the fields. So like, cool, I want to set this any field, and I want to um set the direction code and so it's helping me here you can see i chose direction code which is a boolean but it tells you that incoming is false outgoing is true so like, oh cool that kind of helps me know you know what the values are so if you have some option sets that you're like oh i don't remember what the values are of the option sets you know this can kind of help you do that um once you're ready to like generate the code or generate the request you would click on one of these tabs up here so you have an XRM web API version. So here, this is spitting out JavaScript for how to do that update. So it, it built the code for you. So you can just, a lot of times you can just copy and paste this. Um, there's also like a way to execute. Notice it's saying here, you can't do this when you're inside the XRM toolbox because um, XRM isn't available, but you could still maybe go to fetch or XHR and you could actually run this code you wanted to you move it to the editor and then you can say execute and it'll run and um, if there's a results that happen you'll you either get like the good of the output but 
a lot of times if you're building like a retrieve query instead, you can say, hey, I want to retrieve phone calls where, where um, things are valid. It will actually give you like the o, the o data results here as well. So that's that's pretty much it. Did you need me to walk through a retrieve or does anyone have any other questions? Yeah, I can go through one. I think that's going to be most useful for non devs is retrieves that they can then put into flows. Okay, so let's say I'm looking for a phone call that has a certain call ID. So I'm going to switch over to a retrieve multiple. I don't know the good of the record. I'm just trying to look for a record based on other other values. And so here I can, these are the columns that I want returned from the query that I'm selecting here in this columns field. Um, if I need to do any one to many relationships, you can do those here. I haven't played with these too much, but it looks like you could uh, select a relationship here. Like, oh, I want to see the uh, SLA KPI instance or maybe the activity parties that are on the phone call. I'm going to go ahead and select that. Let's see. Looks like I can do some fields from the activity party table. Um, here's where you'd build your filter. You're saying, hey, I want where, let's say, Matthew call ID equals, and here you can choose, you know, several of the same fetch where O data equals, does not equal, contains, does not contain, begins with, ends with. Um, so I'm going to say, show me phone calls where call ID equals three, and then I can also order by if I want to. I'm just going to leave it as is. Um, Here's what that looks like in JavaScript code. So if I click the web API, here's here's how you could query the using JavaScript. I'm going to do the XHR so that I can copy that to the editor and actually run it. And I'm going to hit execute code. And there you can see it, it started the execution. Here's what my results are going to look like. So if you're trying to build or, or just see what the results are, here you go. And it, it gives you even what the field names are. So if you're building maybe a flow or you can also use this to help, you know, oh, this is what the my filter needs to look like in flow. Um, here it even gave you like what the string value is, right? Like, so if I like went to the environment and I typed this in, you could even pull this up in an environment. So if I go to the, um, I'm just going to do a new tab here because I'm signed in, this should return the API results here in my browser. I feel like I've gone over my quick demo time, but was that, did that help some people clarify some things on it and understand its usage? Any questions there? You go back to the, the web API tab real quick. So that on line three there for everybody that, that's the options you're sending there. So to put that into a flow, that dollar sign select, that goes into the columns you want to pick, and then there's the filter somewhere on there. Oh, you click Power Automate and it will show you the Power Automate version oh. of the query. Click Power Automate. I didn't notice that. Go to Power Automate. Yeah. There you go. It's right there. So you just copy and paste it. Okay. The other thing you want to do is just show them a quick expand. Uh, Jeff, just show them how you did the relationship. You see how it did the expand in the API, web API. Oh, yeah. You see how it did the expand in there on the left hand side. Yep. And then if you go to the results, you see how it does the expand. So you have to go to the property D through the relationship and it will give you any properties you have in the expand. So you can access it in flow. Okay. If anyone cares about that. Cool. Well, thanks. Any other questions? That's it. I'll yield my time. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for the help, Josh and Derek as well. Uh, I was used to using the old one.